An ILR or implantable loop recorder is a device that enables uh, us to record the patient's rhythm in terms of an electrocardiogram at the time of a symptom. This is usually for a symptom of loss of consciousness for a blackout. The problem one has in trying to establish the diagnosis in patients with blackouts is often that the episodes are unheralded, so there's no warning, they are sometimes infrequent and unpredictable. So what one would like to do is be able to obtain a recording of the patient's heart rhythm when they have their symptoms. But we, because we cannot predict when their symptoms are going to happen, we then can implant this device. And the way I like to describe a loop recorder is similar to an old-fashioned tape recorder or a cassette recorder in that it is like a loop of tape that goes round and round continuously every 20 minutes depending on how the device is programmed and after 20 minutes the device will write over what was recorded 20 minutes ago. But what this means is that the device is recording the ECG, the electrical activity of the heart, continuously. And therefore, if one has an event, such as a blackout, and one freezes the recording in the device using the activator that comes with the loop recorder, then because the device is recording continuously, what happened 5, 10, 15 minutes ago when the blackout actually occurred will be captured and frozen in the memory of the device and can then be downloaded. So the function of the device is to enable us to capture the heart rhythm in these circumstances in patients who have infrequent and invariably unpredictable episodes of loss of consciousness. At present, the way we implant loop recorders is the device is implanted just under the skin. So it is performed as a day case procedure and it takes about 20 minutes to undertake the whole procedure. What happens is the patient comes into our catheter laboratory, they lie, they lie down on the table. An area at the front of the chest is cleaned with iodine Essentially, the device has to lie somewhere close to your heart in order to record the activity, which means it's going to be implanted somewhere on the upper left side of your chest. There is some local anaesthetic which is administered into the skin, and then a small cut which is about half an inch long is made, and then through the incision the device is inserted. Essentially, it's uh, virtually just pushed under the skin with a little bit of pressure. The wound is then sutured and there is a waterproof dressing is placed over it. It takes about 20 minutes. You then re recover for an hour or so while you have a cup of tea and make sure everything's all right and then patients are allowed home. I should, should add that they're allowed home after they have been instructed in how to use the device. So we will go through with them how to activate the device and how to use it. We will implant probably somewhere in the region of 80 devices, so we will, we will probably implant or explant about two to three per week. It, it does to some extent, in that clearly any procedure that you have or any operation is going to be uncomfortable, but it's not essentially painful. There will be some discomfort as local anaesthetic is injected, Again, as I explained to my patients, it's a bit like going to the dentist. Um, it stings when the anaesthetic is injected, and then you will feel some discomfort as the procedure takes place. And a local anaesthetic does not remove all sensation. Again, an analogy I use, it still may hurt a bit when the tooth is pulled out, but it's much better than without the anaesthetic. So you will feel some discomfort as the loop recorder is pushed into the pocket but it is made bearable by the local anaesthetic, so it's not painful, but it is, just, it is just a bit uncomfortable, I would say.
After the device is implanted, the patient will be instructed how to use it. So to go back to my analogy that of the loop of tape, there is a little activator that comes with each loop recorder. And this is a little box that the person with the loop recorder carries around in their pocket. Because the device is functioning all the time and recording, what happens is if somebody were to have one of their symptoms, were to have a blackout, they place the activator over the device, over the skin, there is a, a large button on it, they press the button, the activator makes a noise to acknowledge that it has uh, saved the recording, and then having done this and, and activated it, the patient will then either contact their local centre where it was implanted uh, in order for them to attend the centre to have the information read from the device. However, more commonly these days, patients are now able to send this information remotely. Uh, certainly some of the devices can now be linked to um, a remote monitoring system that the patient can have at home, so they don't actually have to attend hospital for this. So there are two ways of activating the device. What I have just explained is if you have an event and either you or somebody in the vicinity can activate the device manually. The device is a bit cleverer than that, however, in that there is also an automatic memory in that the device is programmed such that if the heart rate goes excessively slowly or excessively fast, it will be recorded automatically in the device. However, this information is somewhat volatile and will get written over in the course of time uh, by noise or by other things that may happen. Nevertheless, if a patient forgets to activate the device at the time of a symptom, if they remember a few hours later or the next day, it may still be possible either by attending their local hospital or via the remote monitoring system to download the automatic information which may uh, give the, po the possibility of capturing the rhythm at the time of their symptoms. The device has a battery in it and the battery life of the device is s somewhere approaching three years. So the device can stay in place for three years, at which point a decision will need to be made as to whether or not to remove it. Now, in some people, they, are, they don't necessarily want to, the device removed. They don't want to go through a second procedure. It's not concerning them. So the patients are offered a choice when the battery runs out. Do they want the device removed or not? The device is also removed if we get a diagnosis. So if we clearly get a diagnosis and, for example, a patient may have an episode where their heart stops and they need a pacemaker, then invariably at that procedure where the pacemaker is implanted, we will remove the loop recorder at the same time. Alternatively, it, it may transpire that the explanation for a person's loss of consciousness is not due to their heart, not due to their rhythm, again in which case the device can be removed at any point. And finally, there is the occasional patient who has very infrequent blackouts and although it's not very common I have got probably a handful of patients over the years in whom when the battery has run out we have removed one loop recorder and implanted another following discussion with the patients to try and catch those patients with very infrequent episodes of loss of consciousness.